There have been recent uh, guidelines published for older adults with breast cancer. The International Society of Geriatric Oncology, or SIOG, has guidelines for breast and other cancers. I think they're really excellent. Uh, one of the problems with writing great guidelines for older people is we don't have a lot of hard data from trials to guide us to what to write. So a lot of it is expert opinion. I think it's very helpful. Uh, but this is just really underscores why we need more trials with older people because the guidelines are frequently based on therapies that have mainly been tested in younger people. But they are available, they're worth using, and I think they can help in treatment decision making. Well, it's been a tough haul getting older patients into clinical trials in the United States for a whole variety of reasons. Historically, we actually excluded people from clinical trials who are older, over 65 and older 70. Kind of very short-sighted, but I think at the time we thought maybe the trials were too difficult for them or the new treatments were gonna to be too hard on them. So we don't have a lot of historical data. And then more recently we have many trials that they have open age enrollment, but they require people to be extremely healthy, uh, have adequate organ function and other uh, tests we do, kidney tests, blood tests, and frequently older people come in with other baggage in addition to their cancer. So they don't meet the stringent eligibility criteria. In addition, there are a lot of logistic issues getting to the clinics. There might be extra blood tests. A lot of these patients may not drive, et cetera. So it's been uh, a great challenge in the United States. I think we're starting to take off in geriatric oncology as a field. And I think it's due to the many uh, exciting things we're doing in geriatric oncology. We're building new trials. We are integrating things like geriatric assessments into major clinical trials in the United States so that we can see the effects of many newer regimens on older people. So really when you think about treating older people or screening older people, let's say for breast cancer with mammograms, we really should get off age and consider life expectancy. And I point that out because there's a lot of good calculators available now on the internet and it's much better than most of the guesses that I make or my colleagues. And so that 75-year-old woman in your clinic with a serious breast cancer may have a life expectancy of 10, 15 years in the calculator, but has a cancer that may likely recur in the next five years. That patient should be offered great therapy. It shouldn't be in your mind she's 75 or he's 80, had good life. If an older person has great life expectancy and they have a serious cancer illness, they should go into the state-of-the-art trials. But what if they're frail or vulnerable or have an incurable problem? They need different trials. So we're building trials today to look at this type of problem uh, and to take people who just aren't really very healthy, the older people who aren't really healthy, who are not gonna get into many of the new trials, especially trials looking at new agents or very aggressive treatments, and building them specific trials. So the goals of therapy and the potential side effects of therapy and how they affect so those goals are key to discuss with an older person. And they're very different than younger people we may treat. And so it's important to bring that up in the conversation and really listen uh, when that patient says, you know, the most important thing to me is to be at that uh, wedding in six months and uh, I really don't want any therapy that might compromise me or make me not able to travel, et cetera. So if you ask older patients what their important goals are for treatment, it's not to live two more years to see my daughter graduate college. It's to not be a burden on my family, to consider being able to live independently, to go with my friends to the store or to meeting or play bingo or church. You know, it's not to necessarily live six months more on average. That might be very important for a younger person.